when my foot's starting to fall asleep. <laughs> I'm coming at you with a part two of unbuild unbuilding. <laughs> Should I just try again? Today marks one year since the My Grandfather's Axe channel first went live. I have learned so much over the last 12 months and to celebrate, I'm coming at you with part two of unpacking my grandpa's tools to build my shop. Come on, let's go check it out. In case you missed it, my very first video last year was all about setting up my messy and dysfunctional garage and turning it into a space that brought grandpa's tools back into the spotlight and gave me a great foundation for learning. Now that I have some more experience under my belt and a better idea of how I want to use this space, I'm excited to share with you the progress I've made in transforming my garage into grandpa's shop 2.0. Today, we're sprucing the place up with some cupboard demo, learning how to mud and tape drywall, a few fresh coats of paint, and some more functional storage. We started by taking off the existing cabinets on this wall because they really weren't working for me. I'm pretty sure this first one is from the original kitchen in this house, so it's definitely seen its fair share of action. Luckily, it was just screwed onto the wall, so it was pretty easy to remove once we found all of the hidden screws. The second behemoth of a cabinet wasn't quite so simple. It was secured with nails, so our only option was to demo it right off the wall. I have plans to reuse all of this material in upcoming projects, so be sure to subscribe to see those projects featured in the first of my Any Axe Hole Can Buy a New One series coming soon. This garage was built sometime in the 80s, so it's very possible this thing has been on the wall for 40 some odd years, and it shows. It was really well built and we had to put in a lot of elbow grease to get it down. Once we got it down, I realized the back was covered in crusty, dusty old carpet that absolutely had to go. Next up, I cleared off the rest of the wall and got it prepped for new mud and tape. It's pretty clear whoever built this garage used some kind of self-adhesive drywall tape that they never mudded over, so it's slowly been peeling off the walls. So I decided to try my hand at learning how to drywall, because what better place to trial and error something than in a garage? I got myself a big bucket of drywall compound and some fresh tape and got to work peeling off the worst of the old tape and adding some mud to the more minor spots. Then I let it dry before coming back to add a second coat. Unfortunately, after the second coat dried, I noticed that the spots where I didn't completely replace the tape had started to bubble. I think it's because there still wasn't enough mud underneath it, so I ended up pulling that tape off and starting fresh in those spots. To make sure it stuck really well this time around, I put a pretty heavy coat of mud underneath the tape, but then made sure to remove all of the excess at the end. After getting more comfortable with mudding, I realized my compound consistency was probably too thick, so I added some water to make it easier to work with. This helped the compound go further and also made it much easier to apply and cut down on the amount of sanding I had to do at the end. Now, even after multiple coats to feather everything out, my mudding was by no means perfect. This is absolutely an art and not something you can master overnight. But I did my best and we really took our time to sand everything down before painting. 
and honestly, it ended up looking really, really good, especially once we added a few coats of paint on top. Now that the cabinets were down off the wall, there were a few spots where the trim just randomly ended, so I went in and filled in those gaps. Funny story, this trim I'm putting up came out of my parents' bathroom renovation over 15 years ago, and I've been hanging onto it through multiple moves, waiting to use it for something. So I guess it was destined for this garage. There was also trim missing around the floor, so I turned to my scrap wood pile to find something that would fit. I didn't have quite enough, but the cabinet I pulled off the wall had some plywood pieces that were just the right size, so I pried those off to use as well. Next, it was time to get some more functional storage shelves back onto these walls. I really like the other shelves my uncle and I built last year for this garage, so I decided to do the exact same style on this wall too. The bulk of the shelf is made out of 2x2s, so I got to work ripping some down from 2x4s I already had on hand. I'm building an 8 foot long shelf, and all it took were 3 2x4x8s and a handful of scrap 2x4 chunks, but if you were to buy everything new, you could do it with 4 2x4x8s, making this a pretty cheap and easy shelf design. You can also really easily adjust these measurements for whatever size shelf you need to make. The shelves are made from two basic frames, and mine included two 2x2x8s and seven 2x2s at 9 inches. These 9 inch connectors should be attached at 16 on center, giving you a total of 7 per frame, but I messed up the measurements for one of my frames and needed to add an extra joist. Oh well, it just makes it a little bit stronger. With the frames built, I got them up on the wall, making sure to screw them into studs so they can hold a good amount of weight. Then I got to work cutting down the plywood sheets that would sit on top. As I was attaching the plywood, I realized I had better finish bracing the shelves sooner than later because they were pretty unhappy just relying on a few screws. So just like the previous design, I added a fold 2x4x8 below the shelf for the brace pieces to attach to and then cut my angled boards to fit. I also took this time to add bracing between the two shelves as well. Then, I finished everything off with the last bit of plywood, and these shelves were ready for action. Next, I wanted to address the lack of lumber storage I had in the shop. I'm planning on building a more thought-out wood storage system soon, and I may or may not be using the material from that behemoth cabinet to build it, but for now, I just wanted to get a quick and easy shelf on the wall to get the really bulky stuff up off the floor. So I built a few simple brackets out of scrap 2x4 chunks and set them up 32 inches apart so they could easily hold 8 foot long boards. I also went ahead and added some of my sheet goods and assorted cabinet doors to the other shelf for some more storage. With all of the building out of the way, it was time to add a few finishing touches to the space. To start, I added a wall-mounted fan to help beat the heat. Even though I live in Canada where it's notoriously cold, it can get just as hot in the summer as it does cold in the winter, so this is definitely going to be a lifesaver. We also decided to use some of this wall space for a few shop essentials, like levels and brooms, so I always know where to find them. Speaking of finding things easily, I wanted to create a dedicated tool station complete with a battery charging dock. These little white shelves I'm using were actually originally in that behemoth cabinet I took off the wall, and they work really well for this little go-to tool station. There was even a last minute finishing touch on the exterior of the garage, as it got a much needed facelift with some brand new shingles. Lastly, I added a few pieces of art to the wall. The My Grandfather's Axe logo, and the service plaque my grandpa got when he retired from the Toronto Police Service. And with that, it was time for the final reveal.
It's incredible how a simple space can come to mean so much. This garage has never been just a place for me to work. It's a tribute to my grandpa, the man who shaped my passion for woodworking and many of my personal values. And with every upgrade I make or project I build, I'm reminded of the lessons he taught me, like the importance of doing it yourself, because any axe hole can buy a new one.